The pros and cons of using Linux. Linux is a free and open source kernel that comes in many flavors, or distributions, which are free operating systems based on the Linux kernel, maintained and distributed by their appropriate developers. The Linux kernel is highly renowned for stability, reliability, and security, and rarely is a Linux server ever shut down or rebooted, nor do they see the same instability issues that have plagued Windows machines for many years. Because Linux is free, anyone, regardless of their income level, can obtain any distribution without needing to pay a set amount of money, some exceptions do exist however, some distributions want you to donate or pay them before using their product, but at the end of the day, all software costs money to distribute and maintain, so somebody has to pick up the bill. The open source nature of Linux allows for you to study, modify and redistribute the source code of any distribution, you can also help spot bugs and potential malicious code before it gets a chance to wreak havoc on your system. Linux is also known for being less resource intensive than other operating systems, mainly Windows, and Linux also caters to different needs, wants, and preferences, some distros aim to provide you a very flexible but usable desktop, such as Linux Mint, or Ubuntu, other focus on complete minimalism and make you work on the chosen distro from the ground up, Arch Linux is a perfect example of this, and there are some that cater towards other specialties, such as a very lightweight system that uses very little resources, which obviously caters to less powerful machines, and then there are distros for hacking or penetration testing, such as Kali Linux, or Backbox Linux and then you also have privacy focused distros, such as Tails OS, or Hunix, which aim at providing the user the most amount of anonymity and privacy as possible, this is done through the Tor network, but these distros have special use cases, so you should only plan on using them if you actually need them, they are a one trick pony type of system. So, what are the benefits and downsides to using Linux? Well, there are key advantages and disadvantages, that goes with any system really, and the benefits of using Linux include, running a system that is free of cost, and it can revive older hardware really well, saving the need to purchase a newer system straight away, and Linux generally does not use proprietary paid for software, so just about every program you use should be free of cost and open source. Another benefit is that the more tech-savvy people can modify the distros to suit their liking, they can even change the entire desktop environment if that's what they wanted to do, but this is getting into the complex territory of Linux, most people who are migrating or planning on switching to Linux will probably want something that's easy to use, and works really well out of the box, and a distro such as Linux Mint perfectly sums up there, just works, part in the sense that it works on just about anything you throw it on, and it uses very few resources, especially if the user chooses the Mate or XFCE editions of Linux Mint, both cater towards older or less powerful hardware. Another key advantage is that there is typically less malware that exists on Linux, not to say that no malware exists for Linux, but you're far less likely to encounter it, and this is for several reasons one of which is because Linux is open source, so anyone with technical know-how can spot the malicious code and remove it before it wreaks havoc on a system, another reason is because Linux does not hold a large enough market share for malware developers to make it worth their while developing malware for Linux, far more people use Windows, and as a result, it's more profitable to make malware for a more widely used system, and the last notable reason less malware exists on Linux is because Linux is based on a more secure kernel, it's very locked down compared to Windows, which by default installs you as the system administrator, which lets you have complete access and control to your system, but at the same time, grants permissions that malware can take advantage of. Most Linux distributions install you as a standard user, which prevents you from being able to grant certain privileges to your OS, but this also limits how much harm malware can do, and thanks to the more enhanced security practices of Linux, it makes malware infiltration quite difficult, 
but it's not impossible, remember that. Now that we have covered the benefits, we will now look at the downsides of using Linux. One major downside and annoyance to many is the fact that Linux generally lacks native versions of business standard applications, so it can become more difficult, if not, impossible, to accomplish the same tasks as he or she could use in Windows, however, a good chunk of the free and open source software has caught up with the proprietary software, some applications can do just about everything the paid for ones can. A perfect example of this is Jim Paul LibreOffice, however, a good chunk of people rely on Windows specific software, and sadly, there is no best way to run Windows software on Linux, and there is not always a free and open source alternative of a popular app, sometimes you need that one application that just does not work on Linux, you can use several workarounds. Perfect examples include dual booting Windows and Linux side by side, or setting up a Windows virtual machine, using software such as Oracle's VirtualBox. You can also use Wine, a compatibility layer for Linux, but this may perform poorly for certain applications, some may not work at all, and because of this, these should be seen as temporary measures. The user should try find a free equivalent of a certain app to use on Linux, because the native stuff will run better, and it's easy to install, uninstall, all the rest of it. Another huge downside to using Linux is that hardware and software support can be an issue, because not as many people use Linux, there aren't as many people who know how to troubleshoot it, at least in the desktop market, and because of this. It can make troubleshooting a specific software or hardware issue a real nightmare, but plenty of forums are usually helpful, many exist to provide you with technical solutions to commonly faced problems on Linux, though different ones exist to cater to different distributions. Another big problem with Linux is that it is very incredibly fragmented, think of Linux as a broken planet that has shattered into several pieces and there are so many you cannot possibly count them all. That's basically what we mean when we say, Linux distribution, a flavor of Linux is just one of several hundreds of others, and as mentioned earlier, they all cater to different needs, wants, and preferences, they also all have their own bases, one distro can be based on another, for example, Ubuntu is based on Debian, Manjaro is based on Arch Linux. And there are many other distros which use different bases, some are based on Red Hat or Fedora, and the list goes on and on, but this can make settling or transitioning to Linux more difficult, as the end user will not know what best suits their needs, the user should aim at sticking with one distro, and only switch to another distro if they do not like it. Another problem on Linux is the lack of mainstream focus and attention. Nobody is actively encouraging us to use Linux, nor is anyone shipping it on computers, Dell and other PC makers used to have a deal with Ubuntu's owner, Canonical, which happened some many years ago, where they pre-installed Ubuntu on their new PCs and laptops, and to some extent, this was successful, but was very short-lived and the successful part of it died down very rapidly. So Dell and the other makers stopped shipping computers with Linux soon after, so the lack of mainstream focus and attention also helped to plague Linux's growth in market share. Other than that, there are not many other things to cover, and the thing is, each distro has its own strengths and weaknesses, the overall pros and cons really come down to the distro you're looking at, but some apply to the entire Linux landscape, no matter which way you look at it. So if you're thinking of moving to Linux, carefully consider the pros and cons, and see if one outweighs the other, if the bad outdoes the good, then Linux is obviously not for you, but if you think you'll gain something from it, whether that's better performance on older or less powerful hardware, or you just want a free system that puts you in total control of the system, then Linux might be worth a shot, and for those of you that are already interested in trying Linux. I can personally recommend you try Linux Mint, a great beginner friendly distro that just works, it's intuitive and easy to use, it's free of charge and open source, it looks and feels similar to Windows, Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, it's highly customizable, stable, and does not collect, 
send, or store telemetry data, and it is free of any bloat or unwanted apps, and it comes in three different editions, two of which cater towards older hardware, so if you have a machine which feels sluggish, give Linux Mint a try and see if it performs better on that same hardware. Anyway, that will do it for this video folks. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you next video. Bye for now.